the Montreal Canadiens select. The Montreal Canadiens are proud to select. Yes, Barry, Cotton, Kanemi, Noah Jules, Ryan, Paley, Caulfield. Hey there, everyone, and welcome to History in the Making, the official podcast of the Montreal Canadiens focused on the future of the most storied franchise in pro sports. History in the Making is brought to you by Tricolore Sport, Montreal's official team store. From lifestyle brands to jerseys and beyond, Tricolore Sport has a style for every sports fan in your life. Head to tricolorsport.com right now and use the coupon code HISTORYCH10 at checkout to receive 10% off your order. Later in the episode, we'll be joined by Cole Caulfield, who's currently in the midst of his sophomore season at the University of Wisconsin. As per usual, Cole Caulfield, he's scoring goals, uh, he's putting up assists, he's putting up points. That's what Cole Caulfield does. We had a chance to speak to him this summer before he got going um, with his sophomore season. And it was just fascinating to listen to him speak about just all the intricate details and all the good stuff, all the fun stuff that makes Cole Caulfield, Cole Caulfield. So we'll be getting into that later in the episode. We've got some really interesting questions about Montreal Canadiens prospects, and we're going to get to it right now. DK asks, if Joel Teasdale could have stayed healthy last year, what type of results we would have seen? And uh, I'm with you, DK, on the interest for Joel Teasdale. I think he was, uh, one of the, it was one of the most frustrating things to not see him be able to play last year. But one thing I will note, he was around the team all the time. Um, he is back in the gym now. Joel Bouchard did confirm it. Teasdale is back in the gym. So this is a guy that I think will bring um, a veteran leadership in terms of he's not the oldest guy on the team, but he knows how to handle himself and just a goal scoring touch. So I'd expect him to become a, a, a very important figure for the Laval Rocket next season. He's a player I'm very excited to get to, to see finally get going. Caden asks, who is a dark horse to play in the top six amongst the prospects? And uh, obviously, you know, you, you have your coffee fields that will make it in the top six, uh, your cut canamies that will make it there. But there's one guy that I think is very interesting um, that maybe not top six, but I'd say he could kind of alternate between that second and third line. And that is uh, Vidmo. I, I, I think he's that intelligence. He has the speed. He has the skill to do it. He has to tap into that offensive potential a little bit more. But uh, if you speak, if you hear Joël Bouchard speak, he loves this guy just because he adapts to the situation. Uh, he learns quickly and uh, he's got that high end work ethic that coaches love to play with. So maybe not in the top of the lineup, but right in the middle there. And let's put it this way. Let's forget top six anymore. That doesn't exist. You have 12 forwards. So he's a guy that I'll see playing a decent amount of minutes if he can hit that next gear uh, offensively. And finally, Christ asks, uh, should NCAA prospects stay there for three or four years? And obviously it depends. Um, there are high-end guys that can't learn much. But one thing I found when speaking to the Harrises and the Strubles of the world and the Jim Madigans is that these guys, it's not as much as what they learn on the ice, which is a lot. They learn a ton. You go from high school to NCAA, you're actually learning strategy. That's Most of these guys will say, this is the first time anyone talked X's and O's. But it's the maturity level. It's learning to cook on your own. It's learning to clean on your own. It's learning to live on your own. There's so much growth on the ice, um, but there's even more growth off the ice. And I really think that's the advantage of the NCAA. If you're ready, you're ready. But I've never heard of a prospect being overcooked, meaning they spent too much time in junior. I have heard about a lot of prospects that didn't spend enough time in junior. So I'm all for it. It depends on the situation. But when it comes down to it, um, the more time, the merrier, most often in the NCAA. We'll be back after this with our guest, none other than Cole Caulfield. Looking for holiday gift ideas? Tricolore Sport has you covered. Head to tricolorsport.com and use coupon code HISTORYCH10 at checkout to receive 10% off your order. Visit tricolorsport.com today. So, um, first of all, uh, most important thing everyone's wondering in Montreal, have you tried a poutine yet? Have you, have you eaten a poutine yet? <laughs> Yeah, I did. I tried it on the way home from development camp for the first time last year, and uh, it was really good. It, it was good? Yeah? It was really Okay, good. you're not just saying that because you have to say it, right? No, no, I thought it was really good. First things first, do you remember the first time you put your skates on, the first time you actually participated in a hockey game? Do you remember that? A uh, game? Um, or let, let's start with the first time you put your actual skates on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess my mom tells, my mom tells me the stories uh, – my brother was skating and kind of this open ice thing. And I guess um, I was sitting with her and I started crying because I wasn't out there. So <laughs> they got me a pair of skates to try on and um, threw me out there. And I guess from there, I kind of just fell in love with it. I think 
Yeah, you know, they always told me I was never a guy to cry out there when I was little. And um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of the only story I remember of, of growing up first time putting on the skates. So, and who was the, obviously your brother uh, who, who you play with, um, who, who else was an influence at that age? Uh, you spoke about your mother. Was there anyone else involved uh, with pushing you into hockey? Uh, yeah, my dad played um, pretty much his whole life. Um, mm-hmm. And my grandpa kind of started our family out with hockey. So um, those two were pretty big influences on me. And then my dad pretty much coached me all the way growing up. So, I mean, him, him and my brother are probably the most beneficial in my career so far. But um, no, my grandpa, I can't thank him enough for getting uh, our family into hockey. And then my dad kind of kind of pushed it along and kept it going and, and brought it down to us. You, uh, okay, so this year, let's just go through it. Okay, a year into your NCAA career, um, you led your team in goals and points. You made the Big Ten All-Rookie, first All-Star team, Rookie of the Year, and Big Ten scoring champion, which is not bad. I guess. Uh, what do you want to accomplish this year with, uh, with the Badgers? Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, you look at all that stuff. I mean, it doesn't really matter if you're not, you know, winning and, and kind of getting that stuff out of the way. So um, the, the biggest thing for us this year is that, you know, I want to win the big 10 and, you know, whatever happens, I think, you know, we got, we had a young team last year and everybody knows kind of what to expect a little bit more. They got a little bit more um, games under their belt and stuff. So I, We'll be we'll be feeling a little bit more comfortable going into the games, but um, you know, for me, obviously, winning is what it's all about, and um, you know, those accolades don't mean anything unless you you play you're playing on the last game of the year. So um, to me, it was nice to get those awards last year, but um, finishing last in the Big Ten uh, is nowhere near good enough. They're gonna love that answer. Um... You were talking about you had a really young team last year. I mean, and you were quite young too, I believe. Like officially, you were the fourth youngest, but you're probably the youngest that was actually playing. Um, do you see yourself taking on a more of a leadership role this year? Uh, is that something you've spoken to your coach uh, about, or what's your game plan in terms of being a leader on the on the team this season? Yeah, I mean, I think um, even last year, I thought I was I was a leader, and um, it's kind of hard to be you know kind of have that big role as a freshman. I think just jumping in and stuff. So um, just coming back this year, you know, all the guys, you know, you know how it all works and stuff. And, and for me, probably the biggest part is just kind of, you know, seeing guys in practice and kind of teaching them what to do in practice more than just kind of speaking my, my word in the locker room. Because I think the older guys, you know, handle that a little bit better. And um, I think just coming from them, it means a lot more and stuff, but you know, just the little things that I can do on the ice to, to help guys out and push them in practice to make them better is probably the, the most important thing I can do as a leader. Let's speak about those little things you do on the ice. I was speaking to your former coach, John, um, who has great things to say about you. Um, do you remember when you got drafted, he came and he interrupted the scrum and he gave you a big hug. Do you remember that moment? Yeah. Okay. So what, what kind of influence has he been on? Obviously he just got hired by Ontario, uh, the Ontario rain, but to me, when I spoke to him and he had really good things to say about you, what do you remember about him as a coach? Um, a lot of good things. I mean, all the practices I probably remember the most was the most important part for me. I think even making that team was probably the best, best thing that could have happened in my career so far. I mean, the funny story I remember is, is I guess uh, John was talking to Jack. I mean, when they were picking the team and um, John told Jack that they were going to pick me and, and Jack was like, are you serious? Like, and so that's probably the, the funniest thing. And, and I mean, John believed in me from day one, I guess. And um, so, I mean, I thought that was a pretty funny story of how that all happened and stuff, but. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, so he, like he didn't watch you on the team. Is that, is that what think, you're, you're saying? I think, I think he was more, he was more surprised on, um, you know, how, how confident John was in me and stuff. And um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, think, I, guess, I guess it kind of turned out for the best and stuff. Um, right. uh, Uh, you a lot of people actually one of the criticisms was or maybe not a criticism because that's not fair but Jack is a great player but a lot of the talk at the time was you know one of the reasons we're scoring so many goals was because you're playing with him obviously the chemistry was there now that you're a year removed and people are actually seeing the playmaking aspect we're seeing you statistically speaking your playmaking is through the roof you're driving the rush is that something you pride yourself on beyond being just typecast as a goal scorer not that being a goal scorer is bad uh but the experts the scouts are all saying hey guys like he's more than just a goal scorer he's a playmaker is that something you you work on that you pride yourself on yeah, I think um, growing up all the way until I got to the program, I think I was more than just a goal scorer. I mean, um, what helped me the most is playing with him 
I mean, you obviously see anybody who plays with, he makes better and stuff. And Jack? I, thought, I thought, yeah, yeah, Jack. And I thought we, I thought we fed off each other, you know, really well. And obviously you could see that, but I mean, a guy like that, people don't understand. And it's, it's hard to play with guys like that, that think the game so fast. And um, I mean, you need to be there for him and, and put yourself in a good situation to, to help him out because I mean, yeah, if you're playing with a guy like that, you want him to have the puck and um, what guys don't understand is, is finding the right area to be when he has the puck. So you kind of have to be on the same, the same level of thinking and, and know where to be and stuff like that. But the playmaking aspect, I think it just went under notice just because of, of me playing with him so much that um, people just thought I could score because of the numbers and stuff. But um, if you really watch the games and stuff, it's, it's all back and forth. It's all just finding, finding open spots and, and giving goes and stuff. So, I mean, last year was big for me and kind of proving that um, I can drive the play with the puck. And, you know, it all kind of depends on, on where you are in the lineup and who you're playing with because you got to be able to play with different guys and fit in a lot of different roles. So you got to know who you're out there with and who you're out there with against. And um, it's kind of just all all mental in a way of, of knowing who you're, who you're going against and stuff and, and knowing the guys that you're playing with pretty well. When you say finding that ice, one of the things that scouts, they call it finding soft ice. I mean, it has nothing to do with grit, but it's just, you know, obviously finding really high danger scoring areas. I watch your clips. Uh, you're in the slot, like you live in the slot for your shots, but there's a skill behind finding that open ice, right? Like, I mean, how, how do you find so much open ice? What's the, what's the secret there? Um, I mean, you know, everybody teaches you when you're a kid to just go to the net and, and that's where you score goals just right in front of the net. And, my dad was actually the first guy to tell me um, when I was pretty young, actually, that, uh, I mean, he was a goal scorer himself. So I think he, he learned from, from his playing experience a lot is, you know, you, you're not going to be able to shoot from, from right in front of the net. That's where the defenseman's told to be. So he's going to be right on you. And, and obviously me not being the biggest guy, you can't really outmuscle everybody down there. So just finding ways to, you know, kind of bait a defender in and then sneak out is, is probably the best way to explain it. I mean, you kind of want to get lost and stuff and find yourself in an area. And, and timing's pretty much the biggest part of it, too. I mean, you don't want to rush to a spot. And, uh, but, I mean, if you do that, the play's going to get taken away pretty fast. And, you know, as, as players get older and, and stuff right now, just playing college and, and pros going up the level, it's just you see that the timing's the most important spot and, you know, kind of getting to the right area at the right time. And, uh, I mean, it's hard to do, and that's why it's, it's yeah, so hard to play with the best guys in the league is because – you know, they're, they're doing timing too. They expect you to be at that spot when they need you to. And um, I think that's a special important skill that, you know, not many guys have. Do you remember the brick invitational tournament? <laughs> yeah, I do. Do you remember? I could only find one clip of the goal you scored. Did you, did you score more than once? Or I couldn't find any stats on it. I could only find one <laughs> clip of a goal that Turcotte set you up with. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. I, I've seen that video. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Your shots come quite a while quite a while like that looks like how i shoot now um what's the secret for your like it seems to defy the laws of physics the, the whip you get on it the pre-shot motion uh the the it's quick but it's accurate what's the secret what's the, how do you get so much force on and it almost looks like you're not this isn't an insult but it almost looks like you're not trying it almost looks like you're not giving it like a full whip there you know but you still get so much velocity on it what's the secret to your shot <laughs> um no i give it away <laughs> um, <laughs> which is fair enough do you do is this something because it's a strength of yours do you, do you go crazy practicing it even though it's your strength yeah i mean i think you can never get enough shots in and stuff and it's not it's not about reps in my opinion it's about the quality of of how you're doing it. i think there's many different ways to to shoot a puck but there's there's not many ways to like find Actually, I didn't want to say that, but like no, there's, go ahead. there's there's Change a lot up. of different, there's a lot of different ways to score goals, and you can't just be one dimensional. So like when it looks like I'm not trying, I think that's because I'm not trying to let the goalie see it, or I'm not trying to let the defenseman you know react as quick. Because I mean, now that this level, you're trying to read more of the defenseman's stick rather than trying to pick a corner with the goalie. Because you know, if the goalie can't see it, your your percentages go way up and stuff. So. A lot of the stuff that I worked on last year in the summer was just shoot, being able to shoot off of both legs and kind of making the defender do what you want so you can um, you know, know what foot you're going to shoot off of, know when you're going to shoot and, and how you're going to shoot through them. So there's a lot of different things that I, I worked on this summer, especially um, just to help shoot through screens and stuff and, and kind of time it out. So when you make your move, you know what the defenseman's going to do based on his hand position and stuff. And, 
and, and how much time you have and how much other guys are, are coming in late. So, I mean, there's a lot of different things that I look at when I go into, you know, shooting drills or, or just kind of shooting pucks after practice and even during practice. I think drills are the most important part, even when you're doing warm-up drills, not just shooting it to shoot. I mean, just changing the angle and your blade and stuff. So I'm kind of a nerd about this stuff, but <clears throat> I mean, it all comes with practice and, and kind of just something I fell in love with. Kind of a nerd. It sounds like it means you're kind of a good goal scorer. Um, did you? Okay, first of all, so it's reactionary because that was my next question. I was going to ask, like, do you do you go into it with an no, okay? So you're just purely reacting to the angle of the defenseman, the the positioning of the goalie, and and everything everything else around you, right? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I think I was I've been doing and and stuff. Mm -hmm. But this summer, like I said, I worked on trying to make the defenseman do what you want to do. So okay. Uh, kind of showing him one thing and then if he does this one move you 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 know what you're going to do next so i mean there's you make you show one move there's two options based on what he does so and you can kind of expect based on where his hand position is on his, on his top hand of his stick so there's a lot of things that go into it it's all about doing as many reps as you can just to like get used to the movements and stuff because it's not always going to look pretty going through guys, I mean, a lot of more goals in the NHL are scored on rebounds, tips in front of the net, but the, the ones that get through are the ones that are getting shot through guys and through people's legs and sticks and stuff. So as long as the goalie doesn't see it, like I said, the numbers go way up and percentages, you know, skyrocket as much as you can by, by not really showing the puck as much. So that's essentially game theory, right? When you're you're presenting what you're presenting essentially two options you want him to react when you're talking about being a nerd like that's there's books about it do you, do you actually read up about this or is this all just you know on the ice type of thing or do you actually because there's entire volumes of books about what you just described game theory forcing a guy into two options right or, or is this just pure you know pure hockey on the ice type uh, type thinking i mean i'd say it's a little bit of both i mean you can watch you can watch your own game footage and you can watch the most of the stuff I watch is NHL goal scoring clips. Like yeah. I honestly don't care who I'm watching and stuff. Obviously there's some guys that do it, do it a lot better than others and stuff, but mm -hmm. um, just reading off of kind of what they do and, and how, like, like I love watching Austin Matthews cause I mean, he goes, he goes down and he knows what he's going to do before he's even shooting. And like I said, those two options of like knowing what you're going to do before so you can yeah. react because the time again, like it's all about timing. If you're if you're gonna rush into something, it's just not gonna work. So there's times for it, and there's also times you gotta slow the play down just so you can, um, like I said, react to what to what the defenseman's doing, or, or kind of just know what you're gonna do before, and kind of know what he's gonna do, so that you can put yourself in a better position to uh, to get the puck to the net. Austin Matthews does that tiny drag where he shifts his shot about you know, two to three inches before he shoots, but that actually changes like the whole angle of the shot there. Um, you do that too. Is that something that you just both coincidentally did or is that something you picked up from someone that slight, slight drag at the beginning to change the angle of attack basically? Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously it's, it's a really insane move to be honest with you. It's how he does, he pulls it a lot farther than I can just because of his reach is a lot longer, but um yeah. Just like watching him and how he does it, it's it's all more in his feet, I'd say. Like obviously his, his reach is a lot, but you can just see him being a lefty. It's it's left foot to right foot when he pulls it in like that and stuff. So he's shooting off his right leg when he pulls it in. Like yep. it's a long way. And um, the roommate I have here um, is a goalie right now, so I, I learn a lot from him and I skate with him in the summer. So a lot of the stuff. Who is he? Uh, Robbie Baydoon. Okay. Um, so you guys actually like, yeah, you guys actually like talk about. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he's a nerd about goalie stuff too. And, and so he helps me out a lot, but like the thing he taught me the most is like when you pull it in like that, you don't even need to, to worry about shooting it hard. Just like he says, it's so hard to pick up a puck when you're changing the angle that much. And, um, you can just shoot it back against him when you're pulling it in. And it doesn't have to be the hardest shot, but if you put it in a place where, he can't see it or he can't get to it because he's moving so fast with, with how you're pulling it. It's just, it makes such a big difference. So, I mean, we have conversations all the time, right. When we get off the ice and, and even during drills and stuff, but, um, does he ever yell at you? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we both get frustrated because we, yeah. we both compete so hard and stuff, but, um, 
you know, it's a lot of good stuff. And, and he's, he's helped me a lot because um, I skated with him in the summer in Michigan. So this okay. the stuff he's taught me has is, is actually been really beneficial to me. And, um, you know, it's helping me out a lot. Uh, you're – obviously one of the, the, the prime um, rated number one by every single metric in terms of Canadians prospects. How, how often do the Canadians check in with you uh, throughout the season? How's that process, right? Obviously there's Rob Ramage and Francis Bouillon and Martin Point and all them. Uh, how often do they check in with you? What's the process like? And, uh, you know, do they give you advice during the season? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'd say it's weekly. I'm just kind of checking in right now. I think last year was, probably after a weekend and some just like going over, you know, kind of how it went and stuff. I mean, obviously I talked to Rob a lot more than, than anybody, anybody else, but yep. I mean, he's taught me a lot about the D side of things and that's something that I really wanted to work on and stuff. So it was nice to, to learn from him and, and kind of go over some stuff and um, just kind of get a head start on that. And um, so there's a lot of, a lot of stuff I worked on this summer just with D zone and, and kind of just more with your stick and stuff. Cause I mean, you're not going to play in the NHL if you can't play in the D zone. So um, I think that's a, that's a big part of my, my game right now, even in our small area games. Like I think I have more fun playing defense right now in a weird really? way. Yeah. Just cause um, yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot of fun. I think just like get, taking pucks away now. I mean, obviously the offensive part is just, it's a bonus, but I think just competing on the D zone side is something that um, I've taken a lot more seriously. Um, and I'm kind of proud of, of how far I've come even this, this summer. That leads us to our next thing. Let's talk about the whole development angle. Uh, obviously, we spoke about your accolades. In terms of your own personal development, both on and off the ice, how do you think last season went? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it went pretty good. I think there was, there was times during the season where I felt like I just – I wasn't playing my best and stuff, and it was really frustrating. I think that came along with, with how our team was doing and stuff, and – um, it was a, it was a tough year. I mean, going from the program to having so much success to kind of, um, going a couple weekends where you don't, you don't put the puck in the net, you're not winning. So, um, <clears throat> I mean, it's tough. And, and again, when you're playing on the weekends, you know, that whole week of practice, you're just waiting to play your game and stuff. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that you kind of hang your head on and stuff, but uh, the thing I took most from that is kind of just forgetting about it and kind of moving on, just being, be where your feet are and, you know, the next day in practice, just be your best and stuff. So I think another thing about that is like <clears throat> positivity. Like there are some times where our team was down and um, part of that reason probably was me just like, cause I'm so competitive. I get so down and um, you know, it's not, it's not cause I I'm negative and stuff. It's just cause I hate losing. So, I mean, there's times during the season where I just, I'd be so mad and stuff. And I think a thing I learned from is that's not helping other guys on our team. Like, if they see me not, uh, not being, you know, my normal self, I think that brings the team down. And, um, I've had some talks with coach Granato about that and stuff. So he's actually, he's actually helped me a lot out with that stuff. Like, um, the team aspect of it is, is really important. And I mean, I just want to make everybody on this team better. I mean, um, I love these guys and stuff and it's a lot of fun being with them, but, um, you know, they obviously push me, but I love pushing them and stuff and being the best player on the ice every time I'm out there. Cause um, I just want to prove to them that, you know, I have their back and, and I hope they just give 100% because that's all you can really ask for from them. Are you your biggest critic? Uh, yeah, I would say so. I think I'm probably the hardest on myself. And um, I, I kind of think I like to put pressure on myself more than just critique. I think it just comes with both sides of that. But critiquing is is a good way of putting it. I think it's just, you know, wanting to get better and just kind of setting new goals for yourself to reach them. and. Um, you know, critiquing yourself is some people could look at it as like a bad thing, but I, I love it. Like just like asking yourself how your day went or something, or like even, you know, as you're on the ice or in the weight room, like what did you do? What could you have done better and stuff? Just asking questions, you know, to your own self and stuff. Cause I mean, you're the person that knows yourself the best and knows how hard you can work every rep and, um, and every day. So I think, yeah, I would say I'm the hardest critic on myself and, it's just because I want to be the best. That's a great answer. Um, earlier, you said you review a lot of footage. Do you review your own goals? Is that Are you that kind of guy that goes over everything you did and obsessively? Or? Yeah, I think, I mean, the goals part, you kind of see a lot. But, I mean, I kind of like watching more of my, the rushes or the shots in zone and stuff. Like, 
Wow. Um, the goals, the goals you can, you kind of remember and remember the place pretty much, but it's the ones that you, you don't really see. You have to go back and watch. So um, I think just watching more of that stuff and is that's the most stuff you can learn from. Cause obviously if you're scoring, you kind of remember the play and remember what happened, but it's the, it's the ones that you don't score on or you miss the net or, you know, there's a pass in your feet that you don't really catch. So, I mean, that's another thing that uh, I love watching is just seeing like what I could have done before that play even happened to, to help myself out or, or kind of just watch and see how the play happened and stuff. So I think there's a lot more of the stuff that you can learn from that weren't goals rather than they were. When uh, you're passing, obviously your brain must be yelling shoot, right? Like, like, are you a shoot first really? Or is it just cause you're a shoot first because you have a good shot? Like what? Cause a lot of guys, it's just, it's a thing in the back of their head saying either shoot or pass all the time. Which one are you in the back of your head? Uh, shoot. I mean, uh, yeah. I think that helps a lot because if you're, if everybody knows you're shooting, you shoot, but if they're going to take shoot, yeah, there's just so many more things. Like I think some people get stuck in between, they don't know what they're going to do. If you're, if you're shoot first mentality, you're going to either shoot it or there's going to be a guy open based on yeah. how, how hard you sell it. So I think just having that mentality, I mean, I don't think you want to be a pass first guy because you're going to, you're going to pass up some good opportunities by doing that. There's always a, a right time to pass. Don't get me wrong, but um, you know, to pass up a, a shot, you know, on a two on one rather than risking unless it's wide open or stuff where you make a great play. There's just, um, yeah, I think that's just me too. Like I, I'm confident in my shot and stuff, but, um, you, know, you kind of have to read everything and react from what they're doing, obviously, but just having that sh shot first mentality is I've told a couple of guys on my team, even in practice this year, like just have that mentality. You're going to shoot. Cause you know, when you pass and it gets, it's just in your head that you're going to pass right away. You're going to be passing through guys, skates and sticks and stuff. And it's really hard to do. So if you're, if you're shoot first, you know, holes open up because they're going to move their stick and stuff and there's more holes that way. What would be the biggest lesson you learned last season? Um, like you said it was a disappointing season in the sense of the overall team. And I get that you're a team first guy. What about, did you learn anything about yourself? Maybe not necessarily on the ice, possibly off the ice. What, what was the biggest lesson uh, in your uh, freshman season? Um, just kind of, Play, honestly, playing one shift at a time, like, there were some times where our team would get scored on and, you know, like, you could just see the bench just drop. And I think that's that's one of the things that uh, hurt us the most and, and something that I learned, like, they score, we score, whatever. You know, you just got to go out there the next shift and play the same exact way. I mean, you can't change your game because they just scored, you just scored, you can't get too high or too low. So I think – that's probably the biggest thing that I, I noticed from last year and learned from is that, um, you know, you can't, you can't just hold your head on something that you just did good or, or something bad that you just got to forget about and, and learn from it and talk about it on the bench and, and move on and just get ready for the next shift. By now, I'm sure you've seen the new Rivers retro jerseys. Uh, these are the blue jerseys the Canadians will be wearing for certain games next season. They are Classic, but they're new. They are gorgeous. Get yours today at tricolorsball.com. Are you active on social media? Do you read your, your mentions? Um, if I see them, yeah, I don't really, you know, look at look stuff up because there's some stuff that you kind of don't <laughs> see. But um, if I if I see it, just come up on my page and stuff. Yeah, I'll read it. How how intense are Habs fans? I love it though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> is it mostly good or was it like, like, Hey, so you open up a text and it's from Jim, you know, Habs 699. And, and he says like, you know, why aren't you taller? Like, how do you react to that? You know, cause there's a lot of garbage out there. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's just cause they're so passionate about the team and stuff and in hockey as a whole. And that's kind of how I am. So, I mean, obviously you go, you know, you're, you're going to a place where there's a lot of cr critics and stuff and the fans are just crazy. So, um, yeah, you, some people shy away from that stuff and kind of get nervous, but I mean, I love it. I think um, if you're really like on, the, if you really love pressure that much, it's a great place to be and go. So, I mean, I'm really excited for it. And um, you kind of just take, you got to take it with a grain of salt if somebody's saying that. I mean, <laughs> you kind of just have to laugh at it and stuff because, I mean, you, you can't let it uh, bother you that too much or even, even kind of care to, to really think it's true. So, I mean, there's some things that, uh, um, like even if, if somebody said that, I would just laugh at it because 
I mean, yeah. they're, not, they're not the ones playing every night, so I think that's been fine. You, you briefly spoke about that, you know, thinking of, like, the future. Obviously, it seems like you're really focused at the task at hand. Do you ever allow yourself to kind of glimpse towards the future, maybe one day putting on the Habs jersey, getting that first star at the Bell Center with 22,000 people losing their minds? Like, is that ever anything you dream of? Uh, yeah, I mean, again, like, I'm kind of a nerd. I've watched... I've watched so many highlights of just Canadians games and stuff. And oh, yeah. the one like the, even like a couple of years ago when, when Palin got his, had his first game and like, I, I, I want to say I watched that last week and um, yeah. just to see, like I saw his, that full game highlights and um, <clears throat> like, it's something I think about a lot. Cause I mean, if you're playing for that organization, it's just, you know, I, I talked to Jack this summer about, he said it was the best place to play. And um, you know, that just gets you more excited and stuff. So um like just kind of like there's some nights where I just like go to bed thinking about it like um I mean again like you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself but I mean that's one of the coolest things in hockey is is putting on that specific jersey and playing in front of those fans because you know it's so historical and so special that uh you know a lot of people just ne will never experience going back to the draft You were picked 15th overall. Um, no one in the history of the NCAA, or sorry, of the, the dev program did what you did. Uh, do you ever kind of think, I'm going to prove the first 14 teams wrong by passing me over? Or do you think I'm going to prove the Canadians right by picking me at 15? What's, what's your mentality about that? Or do you just not care? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, in the moment you're kind of, there's so many emotions going on during that time and stuff. And um you have this place in your mind that you think you should go and, and that's just yourself. But in the end, you don't have any control of where you're going or where you're getting picked. So, um, you know, whatever team picked me, I was just, that was going to be, you know, I was diehard for. So, um, yeah, I was really happy with, with being picked by the Canadians. I mean, it's such a special organization and stuff. So, um, I, I mean, I, I'd rather prove the Canadians right than, than try to be, you know, mad at the other 14 teams that uh, didn't pick me. So, um, you know, if I could beat every one of those teams someday and, and kind of prove it that way, I guess that's, that's what would be most important to me. Who did uh, you cheer for growing up? I, I'm sure I read it somewhere. It's, it's, I can't remember at all right now. Who, who was your favorite team? Uh, I liked the Avalanche growing up. <clears throat> Were you, okay, so in which era was that? Was Forsberg still playing? Um, I mean, it was, it was, uh, my favorite player to watch was Sackick. Oh, um, what a hell, hell of a player. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know he's a lefty, but my, <laughs> yeah, my, my dad hates lefties for some reason, but <laughs> he, he says they're not goal scorers, but I thought that was pretty funny. Hey, um, is Mario Lemur a, a lefty? <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> no, it's still fit. no, 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 never just, mind. Never mind. He, he just has this funny theory that he thinks is true, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He's not the first guy to say that. Like, there's a lot of coaches that are like, lefties can't score. And I'm like, I'm a lefty, so I can't score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that, man. Yeah, but my dad was just, uh, he was an OD fan growing up. So he just continued okay. to, to like the avalanche. So Sakic, Sakic was your guy? Like, he was your favorite player growing up? Growing up, yeah. I mean, I mean once he, he retired out of the league, I think McKinnon was my guy and stuff. And I just loved watching him. And then now there's, there's kind of guys, I don't really have a favorite play. I just like watching specific guys that I can kind of learn from. Who, do you mind naming a few of them? A few guys that are playing right now that, uh, that you, you not necessarily, you know, love, but yeah, that you take some of their, their, their style from. Um, I'd say from these playoffs, Braden Point was probably the guy I loved watching the most. I think um, there's a lot of things that I can put into my game that he does. It's just, like the way he carries the play and, and he's not the biggest guy you can tell, but um, you know, the way he skates and kind of, he's so deceptive that it's like the plays he makes are, are so skillful and um, he just competes so hard, which I love that about him. But I mean, obviously the big name guys you watch, you watch every night, you watch whenever you can, but um, like in the playoffs, even just uh, Joe Pavelski was really, really fun to watch just being from Wisconsin. And he's a guy that we talk a lot about here, but, I mean, he's 36 years old, and, you know, he's still doing what he does. Um, he's the best at, at uh, tipping pucks and stuff. And, and I've texted him a little bit, just uh, congratulating him and stuff. And um, <clears throat> it's, it's just – it's fun to watch him because, you know, he's obviously not the strongest skater, but, I mean, he doesn't miss a beat when he's out there. He's, he's so effective, and he knows what he can and can't do. But 
Um, just like those little things that you can take out of his game. We may not be the same player, but if you can interpret his best skill in your game any way, any way you can, it's, uh, he's just he's special to watch. And probably the most underrated goal scorer in, in the NHL right now. Like, I mean, he's right up there with all the other guys, five on five. So uh, nobody talks about it. But so does he – obviously, he's in the playoffs. Does he answer you? Like, does, <laughs> you know, when you, when you text Joe Pavelski, does he come back? Like, does he know you guys have actually, like, a relationship whatsoever? Or? Yeah. Um, I mean, he's from the same hometown as me. So um, yeah. I, I know him a little bit. Uh, we text uh, – I wouldn't say often, just like – you know, a couple of weeks every now and then, like even during the playoffs, I would just say congrats, keep it going and stuff. And, and he'd respond and say, thanks. How, how are things going here and stuff? So um, we, were, we were supposed to golf and fish this summer um, at some point, but obviously uh, yeah, yeah, some, <laughs> some more important stuff going on, but um, he's a really good guy and, and a guy that I really look up to. Uh, very important. What, what do you fish for? Um, bass. I mean, Small mouth, large mouth, rock. I mean, come on, we gotta, we gotta get this specific here. <laughs> like, do we, do we, do we? I'm not too into. It. I love the. Just okay, the, you're not a fishing nerd. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not a nerd about that stuff. I just okay. think it's relaxing and stuff. <laughs> okay, no, just because I'm like organizing my fish, my tackle box here. I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna ask you if you have any good spas there. But one question I do have for you, Cole, and I'll let you go after this because I know you're busy. Uh, do you have any advice for the people about to be drafted, or? If you could go back a year and give yourself advice, what would it be? Um, I'd probably say just try to enjoy the moment because it's probably one of the most stressful days of your life. But you look back on it, that day went so fast, it's, and I kind of just don't even remember it. I just watched the videos and stuff. But um, it's this is probably the best day of your life. I mean, it's just crazy. You, you think about it as a kid, like everybody says, but – in the moment, you're kind of more stressed out about what's going to happen rather than just being in the moment. Because, I mean, it was the longest time in my life, um, you know, waiting to get picked and stuff. But looking back on it, I mean, you can't control it. So just kind of try to enjoy it with your family and stuff. Obviously, um, being at the draft in person was <laughs> is kind of the best part. And it, I feel bad for the kids that just don't get to, to experience that, that once-in-a-lifetime thing. But, um, you know, it's really a special, important day kind of just being with your family and stuff and thanking them for getting to this far. Thank you so much, Cole. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you uh, next week. Thanks, Mark. Really appreciate it. Cheers. I love that Cole Caulfield describes himself as a hockey nerd. And really, that's what you want your prospects to be, right? Uh, you can have all, all the talent in the world, but if you don't study, 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 you won't just not make it in the class. You won't make it on the ice. So this is exciting for Habs fans. You have one of the best prospects outside of the NHL, and he's pushing to make himself better every day. You can catch Cole in action at the World Juniors upcoming in Edmonton. Uh, he'll be playing with Team USA, where he's surely to have a, a fairly crucial role. Uh, but obviously, for me, it's Go Canada, go. Thanks for joining us. As always, we'll be alternating next week with Histoire s'écrit, le podcast en français, which will be available wherever you get your podcasts. Merci à tous. Joyeux Noël. Happy holidays. And see you soon. <laughs>